how are you going to complain that it's hard to be the man, but then also understand that being the man has value? They are linked. You cannot separate the two. It's a logic fail. If you love the idea of being that character you dream of yourself to be, then you should love the fact it's hard to become that man because it means no one else can do it. I, th this is what I love. I love everything about my life. I know the shit I've been through to become who I am. And I wouldn't trade a second of it because there's also this massive juxtaposition, which is so important for masculine happiness and contentment. I'll tell you the coolest thing about being rich. Remember when I was broke, that's all it is. It's only cool to sit there with my brother in the fucking nurse rat restaurant with Salt Bay being an idiot, <laughs> spending 15 G's and saying, do you remember? Stories. When, do you remember when we didn't have a penny? Right. 15 grand for dinner. We never had 15 grand in our savings account in our lives. Man. Do you remember that time we were living off those 10 pea packs of noodles for two weeks? Do you remember? You need this juxtaposition. There is no light without dark. You will not appreciate your six pack unless you didn't have one and you had to earn it. That's how the world works. So when I talk to these dudes like, oh, but it's, you know what, Tate? Yeah, I agree, but you know, it's hard. It's hard. Of course it is. It's supposed to be. And if you're not cut out for it, then, then fuck off and live a normal existence and die. Sit there, letting other men enjoy the spoils of being a man and fucking die. If that's what you want to do is just sit there and exist and then be fade into history unremembered. That's your decision. People say that depression is stigmatized. It's the complete opposite. It's accepted now to the point where it's almost promoted. It's insane. Let me tell you something. Depression is not real. Feeling depressed is real. You can feel depressed, but you feel depressed and that is a natural biological evolutionary trigger for you to change something in your life. That's that's your own mind telling you you're unhappy about X. If I went to jail today, I'd be depressed because I'm in jail. Right. I haven't caught depression. I don't have a disease. I'm just upset with my situation. Yep. I have people mess with me all the time. I'm fat and I can't get a girlfriend because I'm depressed. I'm like, no, pancake lover. <laughs> You're depressed because you're fat and you can't get a girlfriend. Do you understand? This is the point, right? So for a lot of people, your life is depressing. A lot of you out there, if you're sitting there and you say you've suffered from depression, you probably live a depressing life. You probably live a depressing life. So if I was you, I'd be depressed. But if you were me, you'd be happy. Do you know what could solve depression for most poor people? A million dollars in the bank. Yep. Right? Boom. So how is it a disease? This absolute acceptance of depression and acceptance of weakness. When you accept anything to a degree, you're promoting it. Weakness is promoted now in men, right? Yeah. Yeah. So let's take Robin Williams as an example. Robin Williams Killed himself, I was right? just gonna say him. Yeah. Robin Williams, right? Famous. He could be banging 19 year olds for the rest of his life. Multi millionaire. <laughs> Everyone loves him. How could he possibly kill himself? I'll tell you why. Because when he walked into the therapist's office and said, I feel depressed, the therapist said, okay, here's some mind altering drugs. Start taking these for the next 10 years. He was in ther therapy for 10 years. Oh, Damn. God. If I had to take mind altering drugs and talk about sad shit for six hours a day for 10 years, I'd kill myself. <laughs> But if he would have walked into the therapist office and the therapist said to him, you're Roman Williams. There are people in the world with no food. Yeah, there facts. are families in Syria. I say this there every are time. school buses being bombed in Yemen. There are people who lost their entire family in a car crash today. You're Roman Williams and everyone you love is in perfect health. You're a selfish idiot. Get out of my office. Get some ball. Bam. He'd still be alive today. The cure made it worse. And this whole society of accepting depression, as soon as someone's depressed, instantly go to them Oh, poor you. It's okay. We know you can't help it. You can't help it. Why are you telling people they can't help it? Why are you reinforcing that mindset in people? If you come to me and say you're depressed, I say, I will fix you. You're, and you know what's crazy? When I said this depression thing wasn't real, mm -hmm. do you know how many people stuck up for depression? You don't understand. I'm depressed. Depression's real. But I was like, if it's so horrible, why are you defending it? You sound like it's a PR team. Why, <laughs> like, what, I thought it was ruining your life, but you are desperate for me to believe in it. You want me to believe in it. You're sticking up for it. You're defending depression. Yeah. Trying to convince me it's real because it's your cure all excuse for failure. When you're depressed, you can fail in every human metric. I fail at everything, but I'm depressed. It's not my fault. No, you're a failure. That's all you are because you're not trying very hard. If you live in a house, I say this all the time. This is the reason I don't believe in depression because I don't believe in depression. I cannot become depressed. Yeah. No matter what the worst thing that could possibly happen to me on earth, I will feel sad, but I will recover and I will not become depressed because I don't believe in depression. If you're in an old haunted house, haunted house, right? You have two people in two haunted houses. One believes in ghosts and one doesn't. You hear some noise in the night. The wind blows, right? Phew, 
The man who believes in ghosts is like, oh no, a ghost. Now he's scared, right? He wants an exorcist. He start, he can't sleep. He's scared about ghosts. He's paranoid. Da-da. The guy who doesn't believe in ghosts goes wind, whatever, and goes back to sleep. Do you understand that it's the belief that gives it power? Right. If you don't believe in ghosts, the ghosts can't hurt you. If you don't believe in depression, you can't become depressed. And I refuse to believe in something that's going to weaken me. Why would I believe in something that's going to weaken my ability to deal with problems in life? Why would I do that? I'm temporarily immortal. Do you understand? <laughs> Do you understand? I'm temporarily immortal. And I'm not going to waste my living years believing in things which take power from me. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not an idiot. So if you're going to sit there and go, depression is real, actually, you don't understand the problems I'm going through. You're a moron. You are a moron. And the great thing about morons is, as you lose, there's no light without dark, right? Mm -hmm. There's there's no joy without pain. Of course. For me to be a winner, I need to, there needs to be losers. (laughs) If you want to be depressed and sit around broke while I'm flexing in the Lambo, then do it. Go do it. But, but you're not going to convince me to join your way of thinking. The last thing, anyone who's watching this, I want you to understand. The last thing you should ever do is adopt the thinking of someone who is sad. Bam. Why would you want to think like the sad person? I'm sad and I'm semi-suicidal. You should have the same views and beliefs as me. <laughs> what the, she, f- she, the fuck she, out of here? No, Depression. Damn. It ain't real. There. I'm just blowing out of the water. It's not real. You can come at me and say whatever you want. It's no, real. The bumpy road to better. A lot of people teach about better as if it were magic, as if it would happen simply or easily. In reality, it's not that simple. Listen, folks, success is hard. It's not easy. It's hard changing your life. You don't get old without having suffered loss. Every year brings some sort of challenge with it. As you go along the way, you gain some things and you lose some things. You win some battles and you lose some battles. We just need to get that part straight. And wisdom develops in the life of those who have capitalized on their pain to draw conclusions. How you react to the famine determines whether you make it to the food. You can't just pray against the famine. You can't just stay in the same spot and do the same things that you've always done and expect to get a different result. You've got to take action. The difference between a dream and a wish is a wish is something you just hope it happens, but a dream you put actions behind. Wishing isn't going to get you anywhere. We don't understand the human requirement in the miracles of God. We walk away with praise to God, but absolve ourselves of human responsibility. You can pray, God, help me to feel better. Are you eating right? Are you exercising? Then God will do what you're asking. But you can't override natural laws and expect to live a blessed, healthy life. God has created us to be collaborative in the miraculous. That we have a responsibility to take action. Just because you're spiritual doesn't mean you get to pray for a job and stay at home. I'm just going to watch TV and hit the remote control. You'll never get to better if you don't get on the road. Jacob says, if you don't move, you're going to die. How could you let me die and I'm a child of God? You didn't move. And don't act like God has failed you when you have failed to move. When he sees you doing all you can, then he'll make things happen that you can't. Make this decision. I am not going to live complacent, passive. I'm going to pursue what God put in my heart. God has an incredible life for you. But you got to be willing to go through something to get to it. It, Success ain't free. You got to go get it. Look at somebody and say, it'll work if you work it. Whatever it is you are trying to build, if you won't be hungry for it, if you won't sweat for it, you don't have the right to get it. You have not got the right. What is your goal and how much work will you put into it in order to get what you're trying to get from God? How much?
how bad do you want what God has put in your heart? You have to be more determined than the opposition. Your attitude is, if I have to believe my whole life, I am not going to stop believing. I'm going to keep pursuing what God put in my heart. I rebuke every giving up spirit. I rebuke every quitting spirit. The devil is a lie. He's trying to talk you out of your future and tell you you cannot do what God called you to do. Every discouraged person, every person who's been feeling like it's just not worth it, this was your message. It will work if you work it. The church has failed its parishioners because we have been real heavy on the praise and real light on the business. God will use famine as an instrument to force you out of your comfort zone. It'll make you move. It'll make you travel. It'll put you on the road. Somebody say, I'm on the road. <laughs> I'm on the road to better. There's something I'm after. There's something I want to see done. And I'm tired of sitting around assessing the same old troubles and going through the same old things. I'm tired of complaining. I got to move from here. Deliver me from people who will not take action. And God says action is required on you. You got to get on the road. And God knows that some of us won't move if we're too comfortable many of the times that I've had people come up and say I want a double portion of your spirit and I say do you want a double portion of my trouble because you can't get a double portion of my spirit until you can stand a double portion of my trouble you know what I can't stand when I hear Christians say if it was a large will I would have had some money by now you can't dump that on God too many people in society fall back on the word luck not knowing the circumstances of someone else's success. And let me tell you how insulting that sounds to somebody who has literally grinded their to build something worthwhile. When you say that guy got lucky, you're telling yourself subconsciously that you believe that you are not in control of your circumstances. You weren't pointing out how lucky he was when he couldn't pay his bills. Or how about when he's working on weekends and holidays when you're out celebrating with your family? Where were you? See, we sit back and hate on people when it's not them having that is our enemy, it's us not moving that is. Quit believing in luck and start believing in work. You can believe in God all you want, but if you don't work, man, it ain't gonna happen. He said faith without works is dead. The only thing that performs a miracle of increase called equity is called putting wisdom into labor. And this labor now can perform a miracle. Number one, do what you can. Get a list of the stuff you could do, you haven't done, postpone, and start cleaning that up. Don't walk like other people walk. Don't postpone like other people postpone. Do what you're going to do and do it now. If you put everything off till everything get right, oh, when I get all my ducks lined up, is that right? What if it's not duck season? Whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your might and do it with all your power. You've got to fight to put all your efforts and energy into things that's productive and purposeful. We have traded effectiveness for busyness. And we think because we're busy, we're effective. Most people are just trying to get through the day. Here's what I want you to be committed to do. Learn to get from the day. Commit yourself to learning. Don't be casual in getting it. Casualness leads to casualties. You're still breathing. You still got a pulse. You're not a loser. I'm depressed right now. No, you don't have the luxury of being depressed. Keep it moving. Most of us take our talents, our abilities, our skills to the graveyard. Rob the cemetery of your ideas. Say, man, somebody.